Well, hello and welcome YouTube. Mr. Robinson back here with yet another brand new exciting video. All math basic course. And as always, it is an honor and a privilege to be serving you here today as it is every day here in my virtual classroom. Step on inside as we jump into section 2.4 in the Big Ideas Math Integrated Math 1 textbook on solving multi-step inequalities. Now, if it were up to me, in my teaching things, I would probably start with this section in a way. I'd introduce a little bit about here, inequalities here and there, and boom, you do them just like solving equations, with the exception of dividing, multiplying by negatives, flips the inequality, otherwise we graph them. So to me, it's putting all those into one and do everything that we did in chapter one in solving equations. Not absolute values, nothing like that, but just bigger things where you have to add, subtract from both sides, multiply, divide from both sides, maybe some distribution, maybe some combining like terms, put it all together and say, let's go with these, and let's graph them. Some other interesting things will happen when it comes to uh, possibilities of no solution or all real numbers. We'll see what those look like and the lecture will help us. I'm gonna start with that lecture portion. If you'd like to follow along, just keep continuing on as this is. Otherwise, go to the description section down below and find the problem set for which I do the solution guide of 40 questions. And you can also download the PDF down below. Without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get started with really where I feel that this chapter is built up to so far. We're going to solve multi-step inequalities and use to solve real life problems. All good. No new vocab, no old vocab, apparently, because normally that's where they put it. So let's see what they have to say. Simplify each side if necessary. Use inverse operations to do that. Be sure to multiply and divide by a negative number. Literally, I have nothing to say on any of the inequality stuff. Just solve them as we saw before, like we did equations. So in this first example, y over negative 6 plus 7 is less than 9. What if it said equal to? What would you do? Subtract 7 from both sides, then multiply both sides by negative 6. Same things are going to be shown here. Subtract 7 from both sides and multiply both sides by negative 6. Now, what's the one thing you're going to have to be careful of with inequalities? Flip it when you multiply both sides by a negative number. So it goes from less than to greater than. Y is greater than negative 12, and the graph is still the same. Now, the one thing I want to make mention of is with the double check, I'll still be double checking with zero here. Zero should work as a solution, and when zero plugs into here, this term turns into zero plus seven, which is seven. Seven is less than nine is true. Again, zero is really fast to work with. If I just say plug in zero is seven less than nine, yes, that's because I did zero over negative six is zero, and zero plus seven is seven, so it goes really fast. Part example B, we have 2v minus 4 is greater than or equal to 8. Arguably an easier problem to solve. I'm going to add 4 to both sides and then divide both sides by 2. No flippage in inequality. V is greater than or equal to 6. <laughs> Close circle on here and graph to the right. 0 is not a part of the solution set. Let's see why. Is negative 4 greater than or equal to 8? No, it's not. Why did I say those? Because 2 times 0 was 0, and 0 minus 4 is negative 4. So you just look at this. Is this true? No, 0 shouldn't have been a part of it. So that's part of my double check on that as well. So it's that simple compared to that of the equations that we did. I know everything we did building off of it, the graphing, the dividing by negatives and stuff is a part of it, but this is also what we're trying to get to. How about variables on both sides? Well, this is where we start to go to this more strategy and more tactics. Now, they decided to add 5 to both sides first. Nothing wrong with it, and actually where I would have gone, but I would have started with the whole subtracting 2x from both sides because I like my variable terms positive. But there's also the back and forth of would you rather make your variable terms positive or would you rather put them on the left side? Because, you know, ultimately we want them on the left side of this. This one's going to be a win-win. I make them positive and put them on the left side by subtracting 2x from both sides. Now, I'm also adding 5 to both sides to move them over there, and we get 4x is less than 16, so x is less than 4. There's the graph. Wait, where is the graph? Well, I guess they don't have the graph here. But it's x is less than 4. When you plug in 0, again, these go away. When you plug in 6 times 0, 2 times 0, this is negative 5 is less than 11. That's true. 0 is also less than 4, which is true. So it looks like we're going the right direction. Now, that was not the only problem of its kind. I will be having a greater discussion on problems where we decide between would we rather make our variable terms negative on the left side or put them positive on the right side because either way, there can be issues. You might forget to divide by the negative and flip the inequality. You might, to you might forget the whole 4 is greater than x and you got to flip the whole thing around if you want to graph it properly based off that. That all depends. All right, there are inequalities with special solutions. When solving an inequality, if you obtain an equivalent inequality that is true, such as negative 5 is less than 0, that means the variable is canceled, and all that's left is this statement, the solutions of the inequality are all real numbers. If you obtain an 
equivalent inequality that's false, such as three is less than or equal to negative two, again, variables cancel, that's not a true statement, the inequality is no solution. So the graphs of these, all real numbers, is literally everything under the sun. There's nothing that won't work, and no solution means there's nothing to graph on the number line, which is just a weird, barren wasteland to see. But, you know, before we would solve equations for x, whatever, you know, we tried and solve for x, the variables would eliminate. And if we got negative 5 equals 0, that would be no solution, because negative 5 doesn't equal 0. But negative 5 is less than 0 means no matter what I plug in for x, the left side will always be greater uh, less than the right side, which is what we always want in that scenario, because it's a true statement. So that's an all real numbers statement. Notice we're not saying infinitely many solutions. Now the reason is because x is less than four is infinitely many solutions. I hope you know that, right? Infinitely many for x is less than four because three, two, one, zero, and eight, that's infinite. So we don't just say infinitely many solutions because all of our inequalities have that. Well, except for this one, <laughs> except for that one, which has none. none. So special solutions, we're gonna probably see them all in a row because this is its own example. If we distribute 4 into both of these terms here, we get 8b plus 12. Now, you want to subtract the 8b's out here to end up with the statement that we have. Does Is negative 3 greater than 12? No. Because that's a false statement, given that the variables are out, nothing to solve for there, that also means there's no solution. On this second problem right here, when we distribute 2 into both of these terms, we get 10w minus 2 is less than or equal to 7 plus 10w. Subtract the 10w's out, negative 2 is less than or equal to 7. Negative 2 may not be equal to 7, but it is less than. And when the variables are gone, that's a true statement. So this is an all real number solution, all real numbers. I don't know if we have to graph these, but you just saw the examples of what the graphs look like. They're not going to vary from what we see here. So we'll see if we have to do more of those. All right, real life problem. Let's model with mathematics. You need a mean score of at least 90 points as a mean score, an average score. An average score of at least 90 points, at least, greater than or equal to, to advance to the next round of the touchscreen trivia game. What scores in the fifth game will allow you to advance? Welcome to Trivia Challenge. Here are your scores so far. Game one, very impressive. Game two, good job. Game three, you can do better. And game four, nice work on that 89. We need at least some sort of score to get an average of 90. What will it be? Let's find out. Okay. Now, the average portion of this thing here, it's not we need 90. 90 or more. That'll do. We add up all our scores, including our unknown amount, divide by how many games we're going to play as an overall it must be greater than or equal to 90. We've seen that before. So now we combine like terms on the top. We multiply both sides by 5. Good strategy. Let's see how it plays out. So we need our total score to be at least 450 is what that means. When we subtract 352 from both sides, we need our score to be at least 98. Ooh, if 100 is the max score, we haven't even hit 98 before. Good luck. I don't know if we're going to get that one. That's 77. You can do better is the one that we really had to improve on. 98 or better. Best of luck. This is kind of cool. This kind of shows whether it's reasonable or not because that game three was so low. Our game five really needs to sway this way in order to balance out that 90. I really like that, this whole plus minus thing. You're five above 90 on game one, game two there. Game three, it really lessened you. We need to eight more there. I, I like that because it shows that the sum needs to be zero to come from 90 as a plus or minus. All right, that's the end of the lecture portion. Let's go into numbers one and two on the vocabulary and core concept check. Then we have up to number 40 for the problem set. So number one, compare solving multi-step inequalities and multi-step equations. To me, it's really the same stuff. Um, same, same process, same um, properties of equality when it comes to adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. So same properties of equality process or inequality, I should say. But we're asked to graph, we're asked to graph more with inequalities. Inequalities flip when dividing by negatives. Inequality symbols flip when multiplying or dividing by negatives. And, um, what was I going to say? Oh, and the no solution, all real number solutions. And well, there's not much different from those. And solutions that, um, and the special cases can result in all real numbers and not just any set 
any infinitely many solutions. Now, the difference that I state there is that, oh, hold on, this thing really expanded out. The, the difference that I'm stating there is that, you know, again, and I'll be honest, the other ones were all real numbers as well for equations. We just said infinitely many. We probably should have been saying all real numbers, but we have to not say infinitely many solutions this time because all inequality solution things are infinitely many. Without solving, how can you tell that the inequality 4x plus 8 is less than or equal to 4x minus 3 has no solution? They said without solving. Because no matter what I substitute for x in here, the left side will always be greater than the right side. Some number plus 8 is less than or equal to some number minus 3. That'll never be true. Because some number plus 8, some number plus 8 can never be less than or equal to that same number, did someone, Homer? That same number minus three. Oh, that might be a replay. I don't know what's going on there. I gotta check. Uh, some number minus three. All right. All right, guys, so we are going to go into the uh, problem set from three to 40. Get ready on that. Maybe we did Homer. Let me see that. Uh, yeah, Sean Murphy, that a boy. All right, anyway, let's go ahead and get started on that. All right. Oh, let me turn down my volume as well. Okay. Numbers three through six match the inequality with its graph. That might mean we're going to have to do some solving here. Uh, you could do something like substitute your values in, but I think it's just safer to work off the solutions and confirm that everything we did was proper. So I'm going to add four to both sides to begin with. And then we'll divide both sides by seven. And you get B is less than or equal to two. Now, because the graphs have multiple choice options, I'm just going to write the letter on here that matches because their graphs are better drawn than mine would be anyway. Less than or equal to two looks like option B. So I'm going to call it number three, B. Number four, we have four P plus four is greater than or equal to 12. Once again, none of this stuff, guys, is any different than what we did in the last chapter once we hit section 1.3, I believe, right? So 2.4 is like 1.3. Only now we have that wrinkle of these things. Obviously, when we start doing word problems, something will look different, but it's all about scenario. It's just an inequality, right? So P is greater than or equal to 2 this time. So greater than or equal to 2 looks like A. All these are e or equals to. Otherwise, it's really easy to find the matches, I'm sure, other than that. Anyway, also when dividing by negative, there will be some changes there, right? And that includes possibly this problem here, number five. Now, negative 6g plus 2 is greater than or equal to 20. You may subtract 2 from both sides. And then divide both sides by negative 6. When you divide by the negative, the inequality flips. That's what you need to remind yourself of. g is less than or equal to negative 3. <laughs> That'll be c. So the last one must be D. If this is just about matching, I guess D is it. And hey, we're done. Uh, we can we can go from here. Now, just like equations, we can do the same thing that we used to do, right? You may distribute, but you don't need to distribute. So you could also do this. You could divide both sides by three right now. And then you get, and because it's a positive, then this is still less than or equal to, and that'll be five. Now, my preference this time, I'm going to add F to both sides like this. Now I and subtract 5 from both sides like that. So now I have the statement f here, and here's negative 3, and then I swap everything around if I wanted to do the true graph. That's kind of your call thing. Would you rather keep the f negative on the left or put it over on the right to flip things over eventually? Because greater than equal to negative 3 is exactly what we were looking for with d, and that's what we got. You can do it the other way, of course, by keeping the f negative on that side. Just make sure when you divide by negative 1, flip everything around, the inequality flips too. Okay, we're going to number 7 to 16, solve the inequality and graph. So now it's up to us to make the graphs. You can see later we're going to solve, looks like 17 to 28, but not necessarily graph. So, okay. Uh, number 7, 2x minus 3 is greater than 7. More of the same as what you just saw above. Add 3 to both sides. See, I don't know if exercises uh, 3 through 6 were expecting us to actually do solutions, but it doesn't hurt to practice, and it looks like we found this thing. Anyway, this never turns into an equal to like I was about to do. This should be x is greater than 5 after we divide both sides by 2. This is, once again, where I'm going to play some double checks with 0. Keep in mind, and you're going to learn this pretty fast here, when I substitute 0, first of all, I don't expect a true statement. 
Second of all, plugging zero into something you multiply turns into zero and subtracting something from it turns into that negative value. So two times zero is zero, zero minus three is negative three. So when I say is negative three greater than seven, that's because I plugged in zero. Is negative three greater than seven? No. So that was expected. Zero was expected to be false. So hear that out when I do these, please. I think that'll hopefully make some sense when I'm saying it out loud. For example, on number eight, before I actually even solve the problem, I'm gonna state when I plug zero into here, that's five times zero plus nine, which is nine. So we're gonna do a check on that. So do I expect zero to be a solution in this? Well, is nine greater than uh, less than four? No, nine's not, that, nine's not less than four. I don't expect zero to be a solution to this. So I'm gonna subtract nine from both sides and get five y is less than or equal to negative five. And then we get y is less than or equal to negative one when we divide both sides by five. Now, negative one is less than zero and we're going to the left of negative one, including negative one, but that doesn't include zero. It's what I expected. I graphed it the right way. That's where that whole negative thing might not really mess you up too much if you test zero as a part of your solution set. Now, number nine is something interesting that I'm very curious in doing. This one, I really have no, that's a seven. I really have no um, problem with what I'm about to do. I'm gonna add eight V to both sides. It makes it positive and it puts it on the left side of the inequality, which is actually helpful for us when it comes to graphing. This becomes 8v is less than or equal to positive 16. Divide by 8, v is less than or equal to 2. Go ahead and have fun with having a negative 8v on that side to divide by and flip the inequality and then need to still flip this thing over afterward, meanwhile having negatives all on the left side of your inequality with that. I'd rather move this over on that side, killed two birds with one stone. That helped me more than it hurt me. Did I expect zero to work here? Let's see, is negative nine less than or equal to seven? Yes, so I did, and it does. Number 10, I think, listen, number 10 is more of the same to me. I don't know if you can tell, but with a negative on the right side of the inequality, <laughs> this, this is an easy decision. Add three T to both sides. Make it positive, put it on the right. Take the two over and move that over to the left. This doesn't flip the inequality, it just places things in other places. Now, you would flip if you divide by negative over here, but then you flip everything over after that. So divide by three here, and you get t is greater than or equal, or greater than negative four, which includes zero, by the way. And by the way, is two greater than negative 10? Yes, so zero should work. So here's negative four, and that's purple. Here's zero, there's t, there is zero. Okay, number 11, w over two plus four is greater than five, much like equations. Let's deal with the times two by the end so you don't make a mistake on using that later. Let's subtract four from both sides and then let's multiply both sides by two. You get w is greater than two. Try to see the score. Okay, they tied it up. That was awesome. I was trying to make sure that the Murphy home run tied that up. All right, W is greater than two. Zero wouldn't be a part of that. Four isn't greater than five, so that makes sense. Okay, always feel like you're going the right direction. That's that's a good double check. And it's a really quick mental double check, right? I'm just asking about two numbers. Is this greater than that? I'm not even calculating. Zero wipes out my terms that have that in it. You know what I mean? 1 plus m over 3 is less than or equal to 6. Let's get this term by itself first. And then we'll multiply both sides by a positive 3, which induces no such switch in our inequality. Don't even have those thoughts. Remember, we're not thinking about doing it when it happens. Excuse me. We're not thinking about when or not to do it. It's just when it happens, we got to do it. You know, it's one of those kinds of things. We're not seeking it. Otherwise, you'll run in some trouble later and do it when you shouldn't be. One is less than or equal to six. I agree that zero is a part of the solution set. Number 13. Now, it calls attention to me. Maybe it's something that calls attention to you once you see it, but don't look for it. But it's there. It's there. As if to say, I'm dividing by a negative right now from my variable. I'm going to end up having to multiply by a negative. This inequality's got to flip in a sec. First, we're subtracting nine. 
and then we're multiplying both sides by negative whoa oh hold on not only did am i not flipping an inequality there i lost my inequality now we're going to multiply both sides by negative 8 and then we got negative 32 for p p is less than negative 32 all the way over here all the way to the left would have zero worked in this case no zero plus nine is nine not greater than 13 so didn't expect it it's not that's a good thing remember it's not that we want plugging in zero to make a true statement we want plugging in zero to match the way we made our graph we made our graph so that zero is not a true statement that matched with the uh, flipping the inequality when dividing by the negative so all is panning out well as long as my boundary value is good and i'm going to trust that i got the right boundary value then we're all good there See, a lot of these are two see these are two-step problems we're gonna get into non two-step problems hereafter I'm gonna subtract three from both sides that's a positive three we're now going to multiply both sides by negative four so go ahead see what it does well it flips the inequality to a greater than or equal to that's a negative 12 see it would have been less than a positive 12 but greater than a negative 12 as we multiplied negative 12 greater than to the right that includes zero say what is three less than or equal to six you betcha okay number 15 okay now number 15 has some interesting bits i'm wa wa wanting wanting to talk about them wanted to talk about them six is greater than or equal to negative six times the quantity a plus two remember you could distribute negative six by the way in distribution yes you're multiplying by these things but you're not multiplying both sides by something so there's no flip in doing that now I'm not going to distribute on this one I'm going to divide both sides by negative six however there is dividing both sides by a negative number so there is a flip in inequality here this becomes negative one this becomes less than or equal to and this is your a plus two now when I subtract two from both sides here I get negative three with a but if you want to graph it properly you might want to flip everything around like that make this um nom nom I'm still going to eat the a and we can then get our graph now does zero work this is one where not everything wipes out immediately okay so check this out zero is now zero plus two negative six times two is negative 12 is six greater than or equal to negative 12 yes so it's in quantities that zeros doesn't completely wipe out not unless you do distribution right if i distributed now that's negative 6a minus 12. however that's not the original inequality anymore the whole goal in double checking is making sure it works th with the original because if something went wrong we don't know what step it was in so that's why maybe distributing is also something you don't want to try to do all right number 16 last one in this stage we have 18 is less than or equal to 3 times the quantity b minus 4 and once again if i can divide 18 by 3 there's no reason not to go after it i want to keep reminding you that this is a strategy and you should explore it anytime you get a chance I'm going to add 4 to both sides since negative 4 is or 4 subtracted from b and that's going to be 10. if we swap that b is greater than or equal to 10 positive 10 um, nom nom let's check that with 0 once again where also once again well this time 0 is not a part of the set but plugging in 0 remember this was a 3 before plugging in 0 doesn't completely eradicate everything but it's negative 4 times 3 which is negative 12 negative 12 is not greater than 18 or equal to it therefore zero shouldn't be a part of it and it's not like expected okay number 17 to 28 the next 12 problems we solve the inequality it says nothing about graphing them however so this time variables can be on both sides it looks like we might be able to even well i don't see it yet probably some distributive property probably some no solution all real numbers cases so this is where i'm going to play strategy each and every time when it comes to what side i want to put the variables on and it's going to be our choice thing i this is a win-win for me if i add 3m to both sides it makes them positive and puts them on the left side totally want to do that therefore i'd also love to subtract 4 to both sides negative 2 plus 3 is 1 that's 1m and 7 minus 4 is 3 m is greater than 3. now although i'm not going to graph is 0 greater than 3 no so if i plug in 0 here should i get a true statement no so plugging in zero here these go away these go away is four greater than seven no did i expect that yes do i think i graphed the right way yes or not graphed but solved the inequality yes 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 okay number 18. number 18 you see a little bit of an uh-oh kind of thing because you have eight n on both sides and when you subtract them they'll wipe themselves out 
So n doesn't end up affecting your answer. No matter what you plug in for n, the left side will always not be less than or equal to the right side. A positive number is not less than or equal to a negative number. This is a no solution case. And again, we're not graphing it. But this is a no solution case where no matter what I substitute for n, this will always be greater than it and we wanted less than or equal to, at least for solutions. That was our desired outcome, it didn't hit. Number 19. Okay, so this is the kind of problem where you can pick and choose and this is every time I'm gonna trade it off. So you can pick and choose whether you want your variables negative on the left or positive on the right is kind of the way I'm gonna say it. First time I'm going to do negative on the left so I'm going to subtract 3D from both sides, which means I'm going to add 2 to both sides. Next time this happens, if it does, I'm going to go positive on the right, okay? If that trade-off is to be had. So that way we, you can kind of decide which one you like more. When I divide by negative 5, I have to remember to flip the inequality and make sure that positive over negative is negative. So D is greater than negative 2. Now, 0 is greater than negative 2. So if I plug in 0, will this work? Is negative 2 less than 8? Yes. So I feel like I went the right way. This is also one of those things, if you forget to flip it over, you test it, you say, I don't expect zero to work. Oh no, zero works, I should flip it. You can also do that, test zero to know which way to actually do it. That's a possibility. That's actually how we were graphing our inequalities technically in the lecture from 2, two to, or two one to begin with. So eight plus 10 F is greater than 14 minus two F. This is a case where it's win-win if I do add two F over, positive on the left side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. That means subtracting eight over here. And I get positive 12 F is greater than, that's six. So dividing by 12, six over 12 is also one half, which F needs to be greater than. Zero is not greater than one half and eight is not greater than 14. So I feel good on that. Number 21, come on. Number 21, we have eight G minus 5g minus 4 is less than okay let's simplify this left side first by combining 8g and negative 5g to make nothing with 8 to make 3g we have positive 3g's on both sides this is one we're subtracting them well eliminate them and now we have the statement negative 4 is less than or equal to negative 3 now be careful you well here's the thing just be careful on size comparison. Is negative four less than or equal to negative three? The answer is yes, it is, right? It's further left than it. it's one to the left of it. You could do this. You could divide both sides by negative one. This sounds weird, but you could divide both sides by negative one and turn it into four is greater than or equal to three. You would flip the inequality. If you didn't know if this was true, which it is, you could flip it and show that that's true and either way it's gonna work. Now, if the left side is always, if, if this always makes a true statement, that means this is an all real numbers case. Remember, we couldn't solve for any single number, it just so happens any number will work. Zero will work, 20 will work, negative 1000 will work. Anything will make the left side always less than or equal to the right side. Okay, let's go to, we still have 22 to 28 of this set. You can see parentheses will be had eventually, a couple fractions as well. Probably some more no solution things. Actually, speaking of, or special cases, I should say. 2w plus 1w is 3w, and that's where we begin this problem. 3w exists on both sides. I'd love to subtract that from both sides and just get negative 5 is greater than negative 7. Is that true? Yes, it is. Negative 5 is greater than negative 7. Smaller numbers, smaller negatives are bigger then larger negatives. We're in good company there, all real numbers. Not infinitely many solutions, but all real numbers. Number 23, are these all special cases here on out? Six times the quantity L plus three is less than three times the quantity two L plus six. If I distribute this time, I have six L plus 18 is less than six L plus 18. Now, that's the same thing on both sides, but that doesn't mean infinitely many solutions. It's not an equation anymore, it's an inequality. We gotta see if 18 can be less than 18. No, 
it's right on the barrier no matter what the left side will always equal the right side i want the left side to be less than the right side what values of l work none of them there's no solution in that case 18 can't be less than 18 in that case that's a no solution one number 24 see i wish they did some of the parentheses ones here with non-special cases we'll see if we run into any more non-special cases because i still want to do double checks with plug in zero see if it works we'll see if we get any more from that maybe maybe not i have no idea distribute here we get 10 c minus 14. distribute here we get 10 c minus 30. the 10 c subtract and eliminate you get negative 14 is greater than equal to negative 30 which too is a true statement as the other ones have been before this is once again oh sorry not once again i'm sorry this was no solution so i'm sorry i thought the last one was all real numbers so this is all real numbers a time from before before <laughs> we didn't had all real numbers for i guess a, a minute number 25 We have 4 times 1 half t minus 2 is greater than 2 times t minus 3. 4 times 1 half is 4 divided by 2, which is 2. So that's 2t. 4 times negative 2 goes there. And here's our distribution for 2 times t minus 3. Subtract our 2t's. Bye-bye. Take a look and compare negative 8 and negative 6. Is negative 8 greater than negative 6? No, it's a bigger negative, but that's not how these things roll. This is one of those no solution cases because that's a false statement. So I think if there's anything with this other than like, hey, there's no solution, this whatever solution, you got to make sure how your negative numbers compare. I think that's a good, big, important practice, and I hope you're catching on if you hadn't been already. Number 26, we have 15 times 1 third B plus 3 is less than or equal to 6 times b plus 9. 15 times 1 third is also 15 divided by 3, which is 5. 15 times 3 is 45. Oh, this one's not a special case this time. 6 times b, 6 times 9 is there. All right, here's that trade-off thing. What did I state? Either positive on the right or negative on the left. This time, let's go positive on the right. I'm going to subtract 5b from both sides here which means subtract 54 over here and now we'll get b and this is negative 9 i believe so therefore b is greater than or equal to negative 9. now i rewrite it on the left afterward that's part of the trade-off you want to bring it back and do that after you flip everything over um nom nom i want my b let's eat that not the negative 9 and that's the goal now that's infinitely many solutions it's just not all real numbers Number 27, hold on a second. Number 27, J, three, well, why don't you use X? I'm an X guy. 9J plus 6J is 15J. There's the minus six that still hangs out. Three times 5J is also 15J, and there's a negative six going on. Well, these equal the same thing on both sides, but we need to compare them based off the inequality statement. So once we eliminate the j's, we have negative six is greater than or equal to negative six. Negative six may not be greater than negative six, but it is equal to it. And this part counts just as much. The left side will always equal the right side. We're kind of, you know, I mean, what we truly want is, the, is just true statements and we'll always get them. So this will be all real numbers. We're always going to be able to satisfy that, which is exactly what we're looking about and then number 28 we have 6h minus 6 plus 2h is less than 2 times 4h minus 3 let's combine 6h plus 2h notice it's not 6h minus 2h so 8h minus 6 is less than 8h minus 6 well we've seen this when it's strictly a less than and not also equal to, but both sides are equal, that will lead to a false statement. Negative six is not less than negative six. This is a no solution case. Now, one thing I wanna do before I proceed forward is we did have a solution on 
number 26. I'll come back to that. But we did have a solution on number 6, B is greater than or equal to negative 9. I said I wanted to try and plug in 0 into this. Now, 0 is greater than or equal to negative 9 with or without the graph. That's true. So if I plug in 0 to here, I should also get a true statement. Remember, this becomes 0 plus 3. 15 times 3 is 45. 0 plus 9, 6 times 9 is 54. Is 45 less than or equal to 54? Yes, it is. So that should have been true like that. So we expected that. I wanted to check that. It worked. All right, numbers 29 and 30 are error analysis. Let's describe and correct the error in solving said inequalities. So let's see what they did wrong. I'm trying to anticipate what they did wrong here. Okay, they did something that was actually, I want to write it. They did something that other students do quite often. And I know I brought this up in some section somewhere, but it's worth doing again. It doesn't matter if it's inequalities or equations. Notice they're like, I don't like this fraction. I want to multiply by four. And there's nothing wrong with multiplying by four now but people do it wrong. And here's what someone would do that is wrong. I wanna go times four times four, and then I get what they got here. X plus six is greater than or equal to 12. You know what's wrong? Six never got multiplied by four. This is why you can't do that. You can multiply by four, but everything needs to multiply by four. Everything they solved after is fine, but that times four before didn't work. They they meant well, and, and literally, I wanna say that, like. They meant well in busting their fraction early on, but not every term got multiplied by four. The six did not got multiplied by four. So move on. Now, if you'd like to do the problem that way, let's check it out. But then we'll do the original way, the original way, the way that we try and get the term by itself because it just flows better for us. We avoid these kinds of mistakes. This doesn't have to do with inequalities to me. This is an equations issue. This is a balancing issue. If I multiply by four, great. Everything needs to multiply by four right here, right now. Four times this, four times that. Now, four times x over four is indeed x. That busts that fraction, but four times six is 24. So this turns into that. Subtract 24 from both sides, and you get x is greater than or equal to negative 12. Now, just for good measure, just for good measure, if we had x uh, is greater than or equal to 6 as an answer here, that would mean, well, actually, hold on a second. I guess that wouldn't qualify for the thing that I wanted to bring up for the problem. Uh, but x is greater than or equal to 12 should work for that. Scenario. Oh, okay. No, you know, actually, this would work. Um, x is greater than or equal to 6 was their answer, right? If I plugged in 0, is 0 greater than or equal to 6? No. So when I plug in 0 here, this also shouldn't work. We get 0 plus 6. 6 is greater than or equal to 3, but 6 is greater than or equal to 3. So why does 0 give us a true statement here and 0 give us a false statement there? You might say, oh, because we graphed the wrong way. This is the time where we have the wrong boundary value because we never multiplied by 4. So that's a correction. Now, how would we normally do the problem? We do x over 4 plus 6. Normally, we'd subtract 6 from both sides to begin with. And I remember seeing a problem earlier, right? I was thinking about doing this fraction busting, but it would have... Um, I just decided not to, but now the error analysis lets me talk about it. So that's negative three, multiply both sides by four now. You might say, well, Mr. Robinson, how come here you can multiply both sides by four and it just does it once? Because the six combined with the three, or negative six, they combined already, so it is being affected by the four. That's kind of like the distributive property in play. Two plus three times five, no, hold on. Two, two plus three, let's say six. 2 plus 3 times 6 is the same thing as 6 times 5, right? 2 and 3 together as 5 means they're both being affected by the 6, just like they are if I distributed this and turn it into 12 plus 18. Either way, you get 30. Same thing here. When they combine, it is being affected by the 4 multiplied. Same thing here. So that's the correction. I hope that that clears it up. And again, it had very little to do with inequalities other than my test of 0. Now, number 30... This is probably, they probably didn't divide by negative or something. Let's see. Number 30, we have negative 2 times. Do, 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 do. Okay, they, they distributed. Let's see. They distributed properly. Looks like they, okay, this is a special case. They subtracted 2x from both sides. They have a correct statement, but they said all real numbers are solutions when negative 2, in fact, is not less than or equal to negative 7. So listen, they have everything written correctly. I don't even need to copy the problem down. Their math is correct, but their conclusion is incorrect. 
negative two is less than or equal to negative seven is a false statement, not a true statement. Remember, smaller negatives are larger in value than larger negatives is a false statement, not a true statement. Therefore, the solution set, uh, there, there is no solution. There are no solutions. There is, there are no solutions. I don't know, sometimes I want to say no solution versus no solutions. Doesn't really matter. So no solution. Okay. Number 31, modeling with mathematics. Write and solve an inequality that represents how many $20 bills you can withdraw from the account without going below the minimum balance. Now the minimum balance here is $100. We start with $320, 320. We are withdrawing $20 bills. How many of them? X amounts. We got to figure this out. We got to make sure we don't go below the balance so we can stay at or above the minimum balance or 100. Our balance must be greater than or equal to 100. So which one? Uh, solve this thing, right? Write and solve. Now for this, remember what I said, whether I do negative on the left or positive on the right, now I'm back to negative on the left, right? That's, that's its turn. So I'm going to leave it negative on the left. Negative 20x is greater than or equal to, this is negative 220. Divide both sides by negative 20. And x is great, uh, less than or equal to, and is that is that 11? x is less than or equal to 11. So 11 bills, less than or equal to 11 bills as a total there, right? Once you, once you deduce, deduct, once you withdraw 12 bills, now you're down to $80 or whatever, less than 100. Okay. Number 32, modeling with mathematics. A woodworker wants to earn at least $25 an hour making and selling cabinets. He pays $125 for materials, write and solve an inequality that represents how many hours the woodworker can spend building the cabinet. So, the, hold on. He wants to earn 25 an hour and he pays this for materials. The, a woodworker wants to earn $25 an hour making and selling cabinets. He pays $125. Oh, okay, got it, got it, got it. I thought they were talking about cost for labor. Um, well, it is, but he's paying for materials. Okay, so what we're saying is $25 an hour times the number of hour, hours. Now, spend building the cabinet, you're gonna spend $500 total, that includes expenditure on materials like that. So this is going to be, this needs to be less than or equal to 500. 500 is the maximum for that scenario, okay. So how many hours based off that? We're subtracting 125 from both sides. <laughs> Excuse me. So 25H is less than or equal, that's 375. So divide both sides by 25, and how many quarters are in $3.75? 15? H is less than or equal to 15 hours, okay? For a, building a $500 cabinet, or however you put it. Okay, number 33, mathematical connections. The area of the rectangle is greater than 60 square feet. Write and solve an inequality to find the possible values of x. It is a rectangle. Rectangle's area is length times width. When we take the length times the width, it's greater than 60 square feet. This has to be greater than 60. So this is the one to solve here. Now, I could distribute, but 60 can also divide by 12. So I like that more. So 2x minus 3 is greater than 5. That's a lot smaller numbers to work with, right? If you recognize something's divisible by that instead of distributing, go for it. Totally works out. Divide both sides by two, you get X is greater than four. So as far as how long, how big X needs to be for this, needs to be greater than four, like say five. That means you could plug in five there, two times five, 10 minus three, seven. Seven feet would do for that, something like that. As long as it's bigger than four, even 4.1. Number 34. Making an argument. Forest Park Campgrounds charges a $100 membership fee plus $35 per night. 
Meanwhile, Woodland Campgrounds charges a $20 membership fee plus $55 per night. Your friend says if you plan to camp for four or more nights, then you should choose Woodland Campgrounds. Is your friend correct? Explain. So they're saying you should choose Woodland Campgrounds because you would spend less money. Let's see. $20 membership plus 55 times four per night. Let's see. Do they want us to plug it in immediately or solve? Hmm. Let's say... Let's do this. Let's say for what amounts of hours, is it hours? It's nights. For what amounts of nights N, N, do you spend, if you spend, you should, if you plan to camp for four or more nights, you should choose wooden campgrounds. Now, he, they don't say for a value reason. They just say you should do it just because reasons, right? But listen, if it's equal to, then all things are equal, then your friend's fine with that, right? It doesn't need to be less than. But, in fact, they say four or more nights. So they want the amount we spend at Woodland Campgrounds to be less than or equal to how much you'd spend at Forest Park. $100 membership, $35 a night. We're trying to see if the amount of nights N in this situation will get us to spend less as an overall for this situation. I'm trying to still think that part through when I set that up. I'm, I'm feeling that's what I would do there, right? So in terms of solving for N, I definitely want to make my N's positive and move them to the left side. So I'm going to do that. And then I'll go ahead and subtract 20 over here. Because I got to configure this answer and see what the answer means to me, right? So you get 20N is less than or equal to 80. Divide both sides by 20. And you get N is less than or equal to 4. So here's the thing. If you spent four nights at Woodland Campgrounds, you would spend less, you'd spend equal amounts of money. If you spent less than four nights at Woodland Campgrounds, you would spend less money. But if you spent more, if you spent more than four nights there, you'd spend more. And that's something I think that, listen, your friend's kind of an idiot. I mean, you know, this is one of those things, or my friend, I guess, you know, it's one of those things that we could look at for ourselves and say, well, you know. You don't have to make an equation to tell yourself that more nights at Woodland Campgrounds eventually will be spending more money. You're spending 55 a night there versus 35 a night here. I know you start at 100, but eventually one's going to pass the other, right? Think about 100 nights, right? Eventually, Woodland Campgrounds, you're going to spend more. Now, at what point? I don't know, but they said four or more. So, or more could mean, you know, two weeks. Who knows? My friend is wrong. My friend is incorrect. You spend the same amount for four nights. Now, if they said four nights, I'd, I'd give them the benefit of the doubt. It's equal for four nights, but you spend more at Woodland Campgrounds after four nights, which is opposite of what my friend stated. I think they, uh, I think they just don't like me. Number 35 on problem solving. The height of one story of a building is about 10 feet. The bottom of the ladder on the fire truck must be at least 24 feet away from the building. So the bottom of the ladder. So right here, this must be at least 24 feet. We'll see where they're going with this. How many stories can the ladder reach justify your answer? Are we supposed to know Pythagorean theorem? If so, we'll we'll go ahead and dig it out. So this is a right triangle. This is a right triangle. And in a right triangle, there's a relationship that is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'll call this a. Whoops. A, b, c. So this is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The sum of the squares of your legs of a right triangle, the ones that make the right angle, <laughs> equal the hypotenuse. Now you must be at least 24 feet away from the building. So this must be 24 or greater. And the 74 foot thing stays as it is. I, I'm going to start with it like an equation and decide what I want to do with the uh, inequality afterward. There's also the eight feet we have to attend to here as well. It says how many stories can the ladder reach? So our a squared plus b squared, a squared is unknown, b squared is 24 or more, but we'll, again, we'll work on that, equals 74 squared. 
So 24 squared I know is 576. 74 squared is I have no idea. So 74 squared. Now I'm going to subtract 24 squared from there afterward. Oh no, my calculator is doing this crashing thing again. Hold on, this happened on my last... Was it this video or the last one? I think on my last video, just it wasn't responsive. I know you can't see it. That doesn't matter. The fact is I can't use it right now. Let me try it again. There we go. 74 squared. And I'm getting 5476. When I subtract 576, that's 4900, right? That's, that's a little good. At least it's a perfect square value. I'm going to subtract 576 from both sides of this thing. And this is a squared equals 4,900. Now, we haven't done a lot on square root things, but if you take the square root of both sides, you get 70. This is a value for a that you would get if this is 24 feet away from the ladder there. Now, the thing I want to talk about is this. 70 feet is the maximum height that you can reach here. It's the maximum because if 24 feet, if you need to be at least 24 feet away from the building, you have to be 24 or more. The more I scoot away from the building, this is a fixed amount, the lower you're going to be on this thing. So the most A can be is 70 feet. Now keep in mind, there's also the 8 feet of the fire truck, which is not from the ladder base. So 70 plus 8 equals 78 feet. Now the question was what? How many stories can the ladder reach when the height of one story of the building is about 10 feet? Well, 10 feet per story times the number of stories must be less than or equal to, let's see, our height, our less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, I'm trying to think of how this part works here. I guess less than or equal to our height that we have here. The number of stories that we can reach total has to be less than or equal to the amount of feet we can reach as a maximum height for a ladder. When you divide both sides by 10 in that case, this is where the inequality really takes hold. X is less than or equal to 7.8 stories which means it can't reach the eighth, eighth story. So how many can it reach? Seven stories, because it must be less than or equal to 7.8. See, what would be wrong for you to do is say, less than or equal to 7.8. Let's round up to eight. Well, that doesn't make any sense. It has to be less than or equal to 7.8. <laughs> That's exactly the time that you don't do any rounding because it needs to be less than or equal to. Okay, about five more here. Number 36. How do you see it? it says the graph shows your budget and the total cost of X gallons of gasoline and a car wash. You want to determine the possible amounts in gallons of gasoline you can buy within your budget. Hold on, I'm missing what the two things are. Y equals 40 and Y equals 3.55X plus 8. What is your budget? The graph shows your budget and the total cost of X gallons of gas. Oh, I see, I see, I see. So here's the gasoline expenditure, here's the car wash expenditure, here's your budget, got it, okay, I see. So your budget here for part A is $40. It's that line. This graph is representing a line that we can't budge really, right? How much does a gallon of gasoline cost? That is $3.55 per gallon. How much does the car wash cost? Cost, cost, $3.55 per gallon is gasoline car wash is just a flat eight dollars must be a basic not a not a premium not a triple triple whatever car wash okay now that's a rate here this is a fixed amount write an inequality that represents the possible amounts of gasoline you can buy so the amount of money we can spend on gasoline and car wash cannot exceed forty dollars that's our inequality Use the graph to estimate the solution of your inequality in part C. Looks like about nine. Once we hit $40, that's up to about nine uh, gallons of gasoline. So part D, X must be less than or equal to nine gallons is our estimation of that thing, right? No more than nine gallons of gasoline is that result. Now, is that an exact? I don't know. I didn't solve this thing here, but I can try it. We would subtract, I'm just going to do this in my head or on the calculator. We subtract 8 from both sides and then divide both sides by 355. Looks like the answer would be 9.014 or whatever. So we were close. We estimated, would we get exactly 9 gallons? Maybe not. But we would get really close to it. Actually, we'd get a little more than 9 gallons. I think that's the point. We'd get a little more than 9 gallons, but within our $40 expenditure. 
Okay. Number 37. I was hoping to get within an hour. I don't think I will. Number 37. Problem solving. For what values of R will the area of the shaded region be greater than or equal to 9 times pi minus 2? All right, the shaded region, all right, this is interesting here because this once again uses some Pythagorean theorem stuff for you. First of all, the area of the circle is pi r squared, and it is pi r squared. The radius here is r, the radius is r. But when you look at this square on the problem, they have this length as r, and then any radius is the same. That means this is also r, and they're showing a right angle here. So if you use Pythagorean theorem, and there are some things you're not going to know how to do exactly with this, but I'm calling this length here an x. This is what we have to find using right triangle Pythagorean theorem in that x squared equals r squared plus r squared. So x squared equals 2r squared. Now the good news is we don't have to take the square root of both sides because the area of the square is x times x, which is x squared. So if the area of square is x times x, which is x squared, that means it's also 2r squared. Area square equals 2r squared. So that's another way we can say the area of the square. The area of the shaded region, I don't know where to write this. The area of the shaded region is taking the area of the circle minus the area of the square. Notice that, that we take the area of the circle, the entire thing, and we take away the area of the square, and boom, we have the area of the shaded region. So that will be pi r squared minus 2 r squared. Now, we learned some things on factorization before. I don't know if we're supposed to be using that right now. It says for what values of r will the area of the shaded region be greater than or equal to that number? Um, I'm trying to decide where we would work that part out. Let's see. 9 times... Okay. So here's what we can do at least. First of all, I can factor an r squared out and I do get pi. Oh, here we go. I get pi minus 2. If you remember, this is the opposite of distribution. r squared times pi is pi r squared. r squared times negative 2 is negative 2 r squared. So we're asking what values of r will the area of the shaded region be greater than or equal to this? So if I do r squared times pi minus 2, I need this to be greater than or equal to 9 times pi minus 2. Now the cool thing here is that these both have factors of pi minus 2, so without distributing I can divide both sides by pi minus 2. Pi minus 2, by the way, is a positive number because that's 3.14 minus 2-ish. So that's positive. Dividing by those means no inequality flip. This is r squared is greater than or equal to 9. r can only be positive numbers. If I take the square root of both sides, this says r needs to be greater than or equal to 3 units. I don't know what those units are, but it would be greater than or equal to 3 units as a result of that. Because, because, because the square root portion, 3 squared is 9, it needs to be greater than 3 for that. That's the part that matters there. All right, that's a tricky problem. This is problem solving. Normally I'd expect that to be what, critical thinking or something, and it quite, it really wasn't. Number 38, thought provoking, although it does take me out of like that hour stretch, like I said. A runner's time in minutes in the four races he has completed are 25, I think this is one of those mean problems, 25.5, meaning average, 24.3, 24.8, and 23.5. Why am I adding them? Because I think we're going to do an average. The runner plans to run at least one more race and wants to have an average time less than 24 minutes. We want, when we add this and divide by 5, we want it to be less than, not less than or equal to, but we want to break 24 minutes. And listen, that's a goal for me as well when I run. If I'm saying I want to break a five minute mile, five minutes doesn't cut it. I want 459 times. Because even if it was exactly five, because you never get exactly five. If it's five with a millisecond, then it's more. So we want less than that. Write and solve an inequality to show how the runner can achieve his goal. So I wrote it. Let's start solving. I'm going to do 25. I don't want to mess these up. So I'm going to do 25.5 plus 24.3 plus 24.8 plus 23.5. And there, unless I mess anything up, hopefully you can try the same. I'm getting 98.1. When I add that to x and divide by 5, that's less than 24. I want to multiply both sides by 5 here, and that is 
98.1 plus x is less than 120. Now, so my total time in all five uh, running times, wait, what was this? In races, in all five races, my total running time needs to be 120 minutes total. So I'm gonna subtract 98.1 from both sides and see what time I'm going to need. I need less than, is that 28 point, um, no, wait, uh, no, I'm sorry, 98.1, 21.9, less than 21.9 minutes. Minutes, is that right? 21.9, I think so, I'm, I'm gonna double check that one, but 120 minus that. Sometimes at this point I'm getting a little fried. It's not my first video of the day. Um, so that's how they can, if they get under that. Now, is that realistic? I, given that they haven't gotten within about even two minutes of that yet, and that it's their last race, they'll probably tire out more. Unless the right adrenaline kicks in, that's probably not realistic. Good luck on that. You should have got, you should have done better the first couple times. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Numbers 39 and 40, last two, find the value of A for which the solution of the inequality is all real numbers. Interesting. Let's take a look. We have a times the quantity x plus 3 is less than 5x plus 15 minus x. If I distribute a into both terms, I get a times x plus 3 times a, which is less than, and 5x minus x is 4x, and this is plus 15. If I substitute, if a is 4, see, okay, you need you need all real numbers. If you need all real numbers, you need a cancellation of your variables. I need a times x to equal 4 times x, which means I need a to equal 4 in this case. Now, if a is 4, does that work? I believe so, because if a is 4, then you end up getting 4x plus 12, that's 3 times 4, is less than 4x plus 15, you get the four X's to go away and you get a statement that says 12 is less than 15, which is true. That would be an all real numbers case. So the value A equals four is what we want. Not less than four. We want equals four. The inequality was set from the problem. We need A to be four on that one. Number 40, last question. We have three X plus eight plus two AX is greater than or equal to 3ax minus 4a. Now the first thing I'd like to do is combine those ax terms. Everything's simplified on both sides, but let's at least combine the ax terms. Let's get them on the same side of the equation. I'm gonna subtract 2ax from both sides, and this is one of those things where I'm just putting it on the right side of the inequality, period. I don't know if that's gonna be the best thing to do, but something else is already there with an a. So I have an a times x minus four times a. Okay, this was the best thing to do. So now it's the same thing. I need a to be three for these to even cancel out. So a equals three is my guess of an answer. Let's see how that works. This becomes three X plus eight is greater than or equal to three X minus 12. If I subtract three X from both sides here, I get a statement that says eight is greater than or equal to negative 12, which is true. So yes, this works out. If a equals three, we're all good. Again, the variables have to go away to get an all real number solution but this also needs to be a true statement. I'll tell you what, if this wasn't a true statement, then there's nothing that A could be. It just, it just wouldn't work out. So it says, find the value of A for which it works. What if there wasn't none? No solution, right? But there seems to be one. Interesting questions, but guys, that'll do it for this one. This is Mr. Robinson. Thank you so much for watching. And hopefully this 2.4 section made a lot more sense with respect to everything that built up to it, number one. And of course, as I went kind of quickly here, it's because we did the previous chapter where we solved using the methods that you saw. And because we already learned how to graph inequalities, add and subtract, divide by negatives. But also just, you know, number two, just how this one really was the one to focus on. That like we could have started here, I guess maybe a little bit, although we would have slowed down a lot more. This is almost within the hour, pretty good time. But hopefully that was pretty good. Quiz comes after this, which is everyone from 2-1 to 2, everything from 2-1 to 2-4. 2-4 is obviously the prominent thing. I'm like, if you know 2-4, then you know everything before it kind of thing. Um, so hopefully this felt pretty good. So thank you so much, guys. Take care. I'm going to see you in the next one.